I'm Lee Dodds and I'm leading the standards and tools work as part of Open Active. Mel, do you want to go next? Yeah, uh, I'm Melanie and I'm project manager at the ODI on the Open Active initiative. Uh, Jade? Hi, yeah, um, Jade Cajun and Kat Mummery here. We are in the business development team at EMD UK, the governing body for group exercise. We um, published the, the last set of activity list. Thank you. Uh, Francis? Hi, I'm Fran. I'm the Legend Services Manager from Circo Leisure. Okay, uh, Stephen? Uh, yeah, hello, good afternoon, everybody. Stephen Winfield, uh, Digital Services Manager for GLL. Okay, Izzy? Hi, I'm Izzy Champion. I'm the Data and Innovation Manager at Sport England. Okay. Um, can, uh, I, can I ask everyone to put on, my, on mute if they're not talking, just because it's a background noise, it's quite hard for me to concentrate. Thank you. Okay, and Nick, are you there? Uh, yeah, uh, I've just pinged him. Um, so uh, Nick Evans on the Open Active team should be joining us as well momentarily. Um, so uh, thank you for all um, taking some time out Friday afternoon to come and talk about um, activity lists. Um, I've got some slides just to uh, uh, take you through and a, a bit of a demo. Uh, just Sorry, guys, I am here just um, hiding. Okay. Hi, Nick. Um, okay, so I've just shared slides with you. Um, so in terms of what um, I was hoping we could try and cover today, um, uh, so the agenda was to uh, just give a quick quick update, quick background on where we're at with um, the activity list work. Um, then the bulk of the call, I wanted to demo um, a tool that we've been evaluating to help um, with the management of a shared activity list um, and then just have a discussion and get some feedback from you on the tool um, and maybe have a chat about uh, what the editorial process might look like um, uh, using that tool and help us move the activity list work forward um, and then finally agree on some uh, next steps. Um, so just in terms of background, I'm guessing you most of you are familiar with this already. Um, we've done some early work on uh, the activity list. There was a version that was originally put out uh, based on bringing together um, several existing lists from Sport England, EMD and elsewhere. Um, that has since been updated with some um, uh, great contributions from EMD um, and that list has been published, still a draft, but I know that a number of people have started to incorporate that into their systems. So the thing that we're really missing at the moment is a uh, ongoing uh, process for managing that list. So what we'd like to do is to end up with a uh, nice uh, open process um, that everybody in the, the sector understands and is brought into so that we can um, continue to collaborate around developing the list um, in a way that will be suitable for everyone. So it's a slightly different uh, piece of work to the other standards work because um, the, the actual technical uh, standardization is, is done. It's more about agreeing the content for the list, how it's structured, etc. Um, so um, that, that all means that really the, the key thing that we're missing is that, that editorial process, um, agreeing how uh, we're going to, people across the community are going to uh, contribute time to managing the list. Um, and the, the tooling um, that might be necessary to support people. Um, so it's that which I kind of wanted to focus on um, in, the, um, in the book of the call. So uh, just bear with me whilst I change uh, my browser setting. Okay. Um, so the, um, there are a number, one of the reasons we um, based the, um, the, uh, the technical standard for the activity list on uh, an existing open standard is that there were a number of existing tools that um, exist to help support creation of 
uh, standard taxonomies, so standard controlled lists that can be used in applications. Um, so we've been looking at some of those tools to find one that would be suitable for use um, in Open Active. Um, so the one that um, I found that I, I think is uh, simple enough to use, but which offers uh, a good range of functionalities to support collaborative maintenance of the list is called IQVOC. Um, it's an open source uh, taxonomy editor. It's been deployed in a number of uh, projects already. Um, it's, if you want to take a look at it, it's at iqvoc.net. Um, uh, hopefully you can see these slides okay. Um, there is, they have a, a test server that um, you can, uh, you can play around with the the data in there is kind of reset I think overnight so you can go in and, and play with it um, that's that is linked from their website and um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and, and created a separate um, copy set separate uh, deployment of the software uh, and configured it with the latest version of our activity list um, and that's what I'm going to show you today um, the the link to it is on the slide there um, I'm just going to also put a link into the chat for the call so you can have a look at it on your own screens as well. Um, if you want to um, uh, log in, uh, then the, uh, the email address for the login for a test account is oaeditor at openactive.io and the password is openactive. I can share those details afterwards, but if you just want to play around, um, that's how you can look at their demo instance and ours. Um, so in terms of what it does, I'm going, to, I'm going to go through and show you, but as a high level, it allows you to search and browse through the control vocabulary so that you can um, you know, take stock of what's there, find terms, check definitions, etc. Um, it's not something that, it's not a user interface that you would incorporate into an activity finder. It's more just there to provide a way for people to explore the list. Um, you, it provides an editing environment for managing concepts, so individual activities and entries in the list um, with all the metadata about them. And you can also manage collections, so we can create subsets of the list for different purposes. It's a multi-user environment, there's different roles, um, so we can have separate um, uh, editorial and, and, and publisher roles to help us build a useful workflow, uh, and it has a public, uh, publication workflow around it so that we can manage uh, how and when the list uh, gets published. Um, so I'm going to just switch over to the demo site, which is the link that I um, sent you. Um, so when you're not logged in, all you really get is the ability to browse through the um, activity list. So it starts with um, uh, a search box, uh, let's search for Football, as you uh, type, it just uh, just uh, autocomplete. Um, so you can quickly see all of the uh, concepts, all of the, sorry, all of the activities that mention the word football in it at the moment. Um, you can then click, click through to a description of uh, the entry. Um, the, the interface is designed more for kind of editor view rather, as I say, rather than for an end user looking for an activity. Um, but it provides, for each concept, we can capture some useful information. So we can have preferred labels, we can have alternative labels. Uh, it, it indicates whether it's in connections. You can see the bits of the, the hierarchy that are relevant. So you can see the narrower terms, uh, definitions, um, and on some of the other tabs, you can um, attach editorial notes, examples, etc., to help people understand how and where they should use that, um, that activity. As well as the search interface, there is a uh, browse view. Um, so by default, you get this hierarchical view of the activity list, um, which you can um, uh, drill into. So we can expand out uh, dance, uh, ballroom and Latin, uh, Latin, and then jump into uh, an individual example here. So as well as that um, hierarchical view, you can also just get a simple alphabetical view as well as another way to, uh, to look through it. Um, so that's the kind of basic uh, end user functionality uh, for people who just wanted to check whether things are in the, the list or look up definitions. Um, because it's primarily an editing tool, 
than most of the functionalities uh, when you log in. Uh, so I'm just going to log in as the test uh, editor here. Um, and what it gives you is, a, is some extra uh, functionality on each page. Um, so I'm just going to talk through how um, it helps you to manage uh, uh, an activity list. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just edit a, uh, an entry. Um, so let's find one. Let's just go back to football. Um, so it, what, the way it works is that it, it uh, keeps uh, a version of every concept. Um, so this is a kind of published version of the list. If I wanted to start revising the definition of football, then I have to click this button at the top of the, the page where it says create new version. So if we start that, then I then get uh, an editing interface. So I can start to change some of the details um, uh, on here. So maybe I want to put in, I don't know, so just football as an alternative name. I can add narrower terms as well. So if there were other types of football, I could list them. I can have broader terms. I can also change the definition. So if there was a typo uh, in here, then I can, um, I can just revise that. Um, I won't go through all of the, the fields, but I can just, I can make changes. I can put a, a, a change note in, uh, say fixed typo in description, um, and it records here who, who made that change. So it's all, all versioned and then click save. Now, what's happened here is it's created a new version of that term, but it's not yet published. So this is where the editorial workflow kicks in. Um, so th there's just a new version of that concept within the system, uh, and I can do several things. Um, I can choose, to, I can decide that my uh, edits were uh, incorrect and I can just delete it and so it disappears. I can cl click continue editing and go in and make further revisions. Uh, or I can um, click send to review. So in the system, there are two different types of uh, ed um, editor. There's an, a basic editor role, which I'm using here, and there's also a publisher. Um, and the publisher role is intended for somebody who is basically got the kind of oversight of what actually gets published and when. So um, the idea is that when you click send to review, it will be flagged up to a publisher, uh, and then they can go in and just check the changes. And then it's only the people with the publisher role that can hit the publish button that will update the public version of the activity list. And it's at that point that we would then um, make the available data in, in other formats for people. Um, at the top of the screen, there's a link to a dashboard. If I click through to that moment, you can see that um, on the dashboard, it's now listing football. So it's saying that there is a, basically there's a new version, the property here, and you can see that it's currently checked out so nobody else can edit that version, and it says uh, who's, who's checked it out. So if we have multiple editors working on the system, then they can each work independently. They can't, um, uh, they can't kind of edit or mess up each other's work because they're all working on, on a separate uh, checked out versions of the, of the individual activities. Um, if I wanted to make some changes and let another editor use them, then I can, sorry, put another editor to add something else. I can click unlock um, and then if I go back to the dashboard it will be listed there uh, hopefully yeah. uh, but it's not locked by anyone so another editor could, go, editor could go in and make some changes. Lee can I ask a quick question? Yeah um, sure. Uh, the, the, the first bit that you did when you went in and you made the change is that the open bit so anyone could go in and do that? No so the, it's only people who have got an editor login can make changes so it doesn't have a, what it doesn't have is a way for people to suggest an edit or a change. Okay, that's fine. I was just yeah. um, trying to just figure it out in my head. Yeah. Um, so that's that's just making a revision. Um, uh, if if, so if I was logged in as a publisher, I could uh, accept that change and then update the published version. Um, we can also add uh, new concepts. So if we wanted to add a new entry to the activity list, uh, we can do that. Um, I was trying to find uh, an activity to add to use a real example. I was struggling to find a, uh, uh, an activity that might not be in the list. We've and then, got um, well, I, well, I found this. I've never heard hobby horsing, which apparently is big in Finland. 
Um, so I'm going to use this, but if you've got, if you want me to use a different example, I can do that. No, that's fine. That's excellent. That, that's that's great. <laughs> what on earth? Amazing. So yeah, apparently it's, it's big in Finland. It might be over here someday. someday. So let's put in a uh, hobby horse, hobby horsing, or hobby horses. Maybe hobby horsing is the alternative spelling. Um, now we need to put, put it into the hierarchy. So um, we can decide where it fits. They look like they were in the gym. I'm going to say it's, uh, let's say it's an athletics sport. There's, there's probably better things. But like we can tie what the broader terms are. We can set multiple there. We can also set some related terms. So maybe it's related to horse racing, for example. Um, so we can, we can set uh, broader terms, narrow terms, related terms. Uh, and then there's other, we can put in a, a definition. Um, we can Finland, um, add some editorial notes. Um, so maybe I'm going to say, uh, the new craze in the UK. Um, for each of these, uh, for each of these definitions, you, we can we can actually add multiple languages. Um, it, the system's only configured for English at the moment, but if we needed to manage Welsh, for example, then we can put uh, or, the, or other languages, then we can put those in. Um, so I click save. Um, so I've now got a new uh, vocabulary, so a new entry in the vocabulary. I go to the dashboard, you can see it's, it's listed. Um, and I can, again, as, as before, I can just send that to a review. Um, I can see how that fits into the overall scheme, because if I go into, uh, sorry, if I go into the um, hierarchical view, when you're signed in as a, an editor, uh, as well as the hierarchical and alphabetical views, there's also a draft view. Um, so if I switch to draft view, what it show, should be showing me is um, the uh, the kind of the pen all of the pending terms, so I can then see where things fit and see whether something makes sense in terms of where it sits in the hierarchy. When you're looking at when you're looking at the draft view, the other thing that you can do is move things around. Um, so if I just if we decided that um, uh, let's see, baton twirling. Is going to fit into athletics. Sorry, drop them. Then we can just drop that in, um, and I can just click move, and it will reorder the, um, the vocabulary. So I can just drag and drop. So if we just, we don't have to go in the editing interface for everything. If we just want to rearrange things, um, that's easy enough to do. Um, if I go back to the dashboard. You can see that baton twirling has been updated. So I could go back in and fix that in the editor, or I could just uh, drag it around again in the interface. Uh, so that's the, that's the basics of, of managing the um, individual concepts. Um, the other thing we can do is uh, create collections. So there's a separate dashboard for those. And over here on the right, there's a new collection view. So we can create different types of, well, a collection of any, any number of collections that we want. So we could say, we're going to have uh, Sport England recognised sports as a collection. So we want to build that up. So we might go with uh, football. Uh, Izzy, name some more um, Sport England recognised. Oh no, that's putting me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> tennis, swimming. Swimming, there we go. I only need to All the obvious ones, cycling, yeah. mountaineering. So I can, uh, I can build those up. That'll, that'll do, I'll just add three. Um, so I just built up the collection based on the, um, the existing concepts in the scheme. Um, in the dashboard, you can see then there's a new collection. It's got three items in it. Um, so we can decide when, when and where we're going to publish that and publish those. Um, and, and Jade, it's worth saying at this point, so now you've got three collections. Um, if you're keen to make those kind of open active collections and maintain those with the community, then they could be moved into here. Um, otherwise, we need to find another way of, of managing those. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, because they're, 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 uh, they're pretty cheap to build, I don't, I, don't, I don't see, there isn't a big issue with having you know, numbers of useful collections, but I think in terms of deciding whether it should go here or in other systems is whether it will be, uh, it's likely to be widely used. Um, but I could see how 
useful curated views of the overall activity list could be shared across the community as well. Yeah, so we've got things like um, water work, water workout, which like collects all of the things that happen in the in the in the water, for example. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's that's the the basics really. Um, there's um, you know a number of of uh, extra uh, fields on the form, but I don't think we need necessarily need to use all of them. But we can, you know, we can manage related terms. It's got everything we need in terms of managing kind of editorial workflow. So you can see here for football, I've got my change note is in there. We can add editorial notes to capture discussions that community is having, um, record kind of historical changes, etc. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the basics. The only bit I haven't showed is just um, going ahead and, and publishing an updated list. So let's just do that. Um, so we go back into put uh, football. Um, save. And send to review. Uh, and I'm just going to log out and then log back in. That's a different user, so log in with me, I've got um, publish rights. So you can see when I'm a publisher, when I go look at the dashboard, uh, I've got this full review. So I can see that something has been flagged. So I can go in and um, uh, decide, you know, review that to see whether I'm happy with it. Uh, if I am, then I can click publish and that's done. So that update, updated change now is part of the, the public view. Um, you know, it'll be in, in the in the search, the, the the bits that I've chosen to publish will be updated in the hierarchy, etc. But Hobby Horses and Baton Twirling have not been published yet, for example. So it's very quick to make, make changes. Um, and in terms of providing exports of this for people to import into their system, we could trigger that as a, as a separate process so that either after changes or maybe just every day, um, the, there's a new... Uh, export available. Um, so that's that's the basics. Um, does anyone got any uh, questions or thoughts on that? Yeah I've got I've, I've made a list sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think one, of, one of them you picked up right at the end so kind of as a as an end user as a, as a data user kind of how do I pick this up and use it so is it is it an API is it is it like does it come out as an Excel spreadsheet? Um, does what, so, what does it look like? So this, this would be purely for the people managing the, the activity list. Uh, the, the browse and search might be useful for people just kind of checking, mm -hmm. but the idea would be that we would publish separate downloadable versions that people could use in their application. So um, as, uh, as Jason LD that conforms to the standards, uh, so the, you know, the model inspect standard, which we're doing already, we could also provide it in other formats if it was helpful, if it was useful to have it as a CSV file or, or, or something else. So a developer would just go and grab the data from a standard location. Okay, so they don't need to worry about this thing. If that no, sense. no. So th this isn't intended to offer a API for everybody to use. It's just Got a it. tool for us for a few people to to edit. edit with. Okay, and when you were saying we can kind of do that um, kind of daily push, is that? notifying people when there are changes then potentially um we, yeah well i think that's part of the the, quite the the discussion i wanted to have about the editorial process so if we've got a okay. tool how, how do we actually want to use it to, to make sure that um we can get changes through at the pace that people need them but not be bombarding people with updates every day perhaps okay perfect well we'll pick that up then um and then because you said we wouldn't make suggested changes through here, that's what this kind of lacks. So are you saying that through GitHub? Yeah, it could be. Again, I think that's that's part of the process is like how do, how do people engage with the, you know, the, the editors or editor who was looking after it. Mm. Um, one, thing, one thing I haven't <laughs> showed that we can do is... Okay, and um, the other... Sorry. Um, is there is a... You, you can set up uh, uh, additional logins that will allow somebody to see 
the draft changes, um, but they they can't edit. So if you did want to share a kind of in progress version with somebody, then there's ways to make that happen. Okay. Um, and uh, last question, which probably feeds into what you're coming to next. So apologies for saying. Um, are we? Is there? Are we going to now agree? Kind of the. As you said there's lots of fields which we probably don't need on here, so I guess we probably need to agree which ones we're definitely going to capture and use. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's a, there's a few, there's some that we might want to grow into over time, um, but I think the, the, at the moment the core is just getting uh, labels, alternative labels, uh, descriptions, and some of the kind of related, the, you know, the hierarchy. Those are the key bits that everyone seems to uh, want to have. But what, what I'm trying to do here is see if we can pretty much take an off the shelf tool and work within it rather than having to create something bespoke. Because um, doing that will you know, add more delay in terms of actually getting to what people want, which is a shared, regularly updated list. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Anyone else got any uh, questions or comments on the tool? I was just going to say, sort of from what you've gone through, um, Lee, we obviously won't know until we get going any sort of flaws or anything like that, but it, it seems quite comprehensive to me. Great. Okay. Um, I was hoping you would say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, we, we do obviously, it, it, like with all these things, we need to try it out. Um, so that, that, that could be something that we can think about as, as next steps, whether we just want to do some testing before we fully commit to it. Um, that's definitely uh, definitely an option. Um, okay, so if there are no other questions on the tool, then maybe we can just have that, uh, have a discussion about the, the editorial process. Um, so I think there's there's a few questions that I had. Um, so I guess well I guess the main one is actually who who, who would be doing this. So we'll need to identify um, uh, people from the community who are happy to take on the kind of editor and, and publisher role. Um, so that's one question. Um, and then there's how will they, how will that team, the group of people collaborate? So you can see there's a certain amount which is in the tool already because you can see what other people are working on. You can leave notes and change notes, but there might just need to be a bit of collaboration work. Um, you know, if there are, a number of suggested changes. Um, uh, who's going to who's going to coordinate people doing that work? Um, how will those changes be be flagged up? It may be that we're happy to use GitHub. Um, it may be that there's there's other approaches that we people would prefer to do. Um, but it, it may it may be just a, a email list, a, a forum, a monthly calls like this to just kind of work through changes. I, it, it's really it's kind of up to uh, I'm looking for, I guess, looking for guidance and, and suggestions from other people. It's the way I would prefer to do it is not necessarily relevant. It's, it's kind of how you would how you prefer to do it. Um, the other thing that we had some discussion about in the past is, where, is having some editorial guidelines to be clear about what should or shouldn't be in the list. Um, I, on the slides, I've linked to a draft document that I've shared a couple of times. It's been floating around for a while um, that just lists some suggestions around uh, how we, you know, how we, what's the scope, labeling, um, how the list is put together. Um, that almost certainly needs an update now because uh, the tool kind of answers a number of those questions for us. But things like, you know, uh, making a decision about when something should go in the list uh, and consistency around, you know, spelling, labeling is something that will, will need to be in place, I think. Um, but so I'm going to open it up. Does anyone have any um, thoughts about about process or about people that uh, we should be getting involved in doing in moving this forward? Um, so I guess like my I had a couple of initial thoughts. Uh, firstly, um, in terms of like how we do it and the process, um, we need to consider that people are going to be involved and um, might just people with the, the knowledge about the activities rather than the tech stuff. So we need to make sure that um, the process, like people like me, for example, 
Um, <laughs> um, but, but, but the process is um, is easy to to engage with. Like the IQ thing that we went through looks quite easy, but I'm still a bit lost on on GitHub. Um, I mean, with the right training and with, with whatever in place, then that's fine. But it's, we just need to take that into consideration. Um, and then Izzy will have something to say on this as well. But I think we need to we need to find a representative group that's going to be able to cover um, cover stuff off. Like we'll happily pick up the group exercise stuff. Um, but then what could a representative group be? And maybe like Izzy, you, you'll you'll be able to comment on this. Like maybe Sport England need to approach the uh, the, the right people to represent their parts or something like that. Yeah, I think. Um... I definitely think some other NGBs will be the right people, but in some places, I, 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 I would want to go and kind of talk to my core market colleagues a bit more about them because they, they kind of know the NGBs better than I do. Um, but, you know, some, some of them will certainly be the right people. You know, they, they'll be the, you know, EMD or C doing that for their, their part of the sector. But some, some are probably not ready to take on this or they, they don't have the capacity. So we'll need to take a bit of a a decision on a case-by-case -case basis i suspect so that the who might take a bit more scoping than than i can give you i can't give you a list of names right now if you like but um certainly some other ngbs um and then where we don't think that's possible there might be some kind of uh something else we ask them to do or um we'll have to kind of deal identify those gaps if you like of, of where we won't have coverage from potentially from an NGV side and then then kind of see who else might be able to support us in this and kind of bring them on, on board so um but yeah I think definitely like we can start to have I can go I can take an action to kind of talk to talk to the NGB team about uh who who they think might be able to help us with this kind of thing I think the other thing is, as well as we probably there's what I don't know 45 NGBs you've found now or something um, or less that that will be too much I, I don't know what Lee's Lee thoughts are 49 right. yeah it's 49 so I don't know if someone got slashed um, <laughs> um, there's um, that's probably too many Lee, Lee will be able to say but I don't think we, you need like a more representative group so like you could have someone like um, two two people that are forward thinking in terms of this stuff from CSPs that could represent lots of different sports like sports suite people or some of the ODI champions that have been involved and um, someone like that that could pick up lots of different bits rather than otherwise you've got 50 people in a group. Yeah that that's what I, I was thinking that there's, there's probably two different types of, uh, of um, feedback and contribution that having a smaller group who would have logins to the tool and would be you know making changes and making sure that things were maintained there's like one piece and then the other piece of getting that wider buy-in because you're right I don't think we would necessarily have uh, expect to get you know 40 50 people logging in and maintaining their bits of the list but being able to point them at the tool and say can you check you know this you know everything below this term does it look right to you feels like a way that we could just collect feedback that could just be done through a form or something um, so, you know, the first step, I guess, would be, to, you know, identifying just that smaller representative group. And we could just start with a couple of people uh, and then widen it out. Because I think having a process where people can get involved is important as well. Yeah, I, I mean, that sounds, sounds really sensible. I, I, I guess you don't know until you start asking people, like, what people's appetite is to get get involved sort of voluntarily or... Or, or whether you know we're happy to get involved with our bit because our bit is a big chunk um and we need it we need it to be right you know because we're developing a, a search and all of that stuff at the moment it 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 matters to us um but then i guess if you're having to ask um someone that's more representative to cover lots of things it they might see it more of a, a task that they're being asked of and of where's the resource for this um I guess you don't know until you get to get started really um, you might you might have someone like if, if you went down like the CSPM route or something I don't know you might you know might, might, might know more about this they might be looking for more. where's the resource or funding for us to do mm, 
Lee, as, as one of the um, operators, uh, I, I see myself as being, and, and GL being a, a consumer of this list, mm -hmm. not necessarily a contributor. I mean, I haven't had a chance to study the list in detail, and I'll do that with some colleagues afterwards. Um, but I, 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 think, I think it shouldn't be a burden or an overhead for anybody. I think, it's, I think collectively there needs to be a small group of people who would perhaps update the list. And then a sign-off protocol needs to be agreed at a, certain, at a, at a, at a, a reasonable frequency. Um, because I, I don't believe that anything that we ever do is going to be urgent in terms of getting this onto the list. Um, uh, that's just just my view, but I don't know whether someone like Fran would have a similar view on that um, from a circo perspective. Um, but but so certainly we, we you know we, we will review it. We'll look at the, the categorisation of the lists, and if, if there's and, and and try where possible to adopt the terminology that, that's agreed here and the categorisation because I think that that's that's a, that's a positive. I agree completely, Stephen. I think, like you say, if we were to contribute to it, we probably wouldn't. The actual percentage of us contributing it would be very, very small. So we obviously operate 50 odd sites, but we don't run every activity. So I would, like you say, I think we would more be looking at the list and trying to take the terminology from the list rather than updating it. Yeah, I mean, I take I take a steer any group exercise stuff. I take a steer from EMD. Um, I, I, even though people like um, we've got people in GNL who would have an, have an opinion and a comment on it, but um, but we'd certainly take the professional advice from the governing bodies or the uh, NGVs, that's for sure. Agreed. Yeah, and that's fine because, like Steve, we work really closely with Wendy. You're going to be next anyway. So, like, yeah. she can, um, you know, if she if she had some feedback, she'd throw it at us anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, in, in, indeed, and and of course, and that's then reflected in the list, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. In which case, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of fine with that. Okay. I'm not sure about hobby horsing, though. <laughs> anyway. I guess, like, the group X bit and the fitness bit is, is kind of not an issue. It's, it's the other bits, like how, who, who, who should we be approaching to be representative of, of the other stuff? It, I, I don't have much more to say, Lee, I don't think, because I, I haven't really looked at the list and I haven't really given it a great deal of thought. And there are, there are quite a few people in GLO I'd like to share this with and get their views. We have a BI manager, we have a health and fitness department, we have a, uh, a, um, a, a, other stakeholder groups in GLO who would want to have an opinion on this. So I, I, think, I think from my perspective, I'm, I can't really have much more, but I'd like to absorb it first and then maybe come back to the series of questions and reviews. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. apologies if you're expecting a little bit, for, a little bit more from me now, but I, 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 I hadn't reviewed it beforehand. No, that's fine. I mean, really, it was just to kind of uh, have an open discussion about moving things forward. Um, so, that's great. Um, so from, our, from, our, from a CERCO perspective, so we have gone through an, an exercise to try and um, like consolidate our activity list. Um, the problem we've had is that sites have been going off and literally creating their own version of body pump as an example. So our, our list of actual activities was huge um, and it's taken us ages to try and streamline them. And I think most, if you were to ask operators, would also probably be in the same boat with that. Um, so I, I, like Stephen said, I think it would be better to come from the NGBs and we'd follow the suit from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So uh, what, I, what I'm thinking is, is in terms of a maybe if you just move on to the kind of next steps it feels like um there's, there's, a, there's a bit of uh, technical work that we need to do at uh, at our end in order to um just kind of set up a, a proper instance of this because it's just running on uh, pretty small spec machines at the moment um so there's a bit of technical work for the open active team but i'm thinking that if we initially give uh, uh, Jade, perhaps you or uh, members of your team, editorial access um, and identify how other people can um, request that and get involved is, a, is one piece. Um, I think uh, making sure that there's a contact point for the, the editorial team, so where uh, Francis and Stephen have feedback that they have a place that you can go to, that could just be a mailing list. If people aren't, aren't comfortable with GitHub, then I don't want to force that on people. It would be nice if feedback was open where possible, but if, if just a, an email contact point, you know, a distribution list is easier, then we can go with that. 
I mean, it's not that I'm anti GitHub. I just feel like I would need, like, it, it would be good to have, like, a training session before using it because at the moment I'm just, like, punting around, pushing buttons. Yeah, I mean, I'm conscious, I mean, it, it gives, it's, it's useful to have public conversations, but, um, yeah, I'm conscious that it's another system for people to have to use alongside this tool. Um, I, I think in most cases, it's just going to be having a, a means to capture feedback from people which could just come in ad hoc via emails we could also set up um, just a simple google form to say to people to say you know football i think the description should be this or i think you need to add hobby horsing and here's here's a definition and then that could just go into a spreadsheet that you could work through as a you know as suggested updates so we could keep it very light to begin with and i suppose we can also make that spreadsheet openly available somewhere as well so we can publish that so people can see, yeah, so they can see changes. And then we can also do that at wider outreach that we just talked about and reach out to the NGBs for um, further review on their bits. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take an action to go and talk to our kind of the core market team who work with the NGBs quite closely just to figure out who might be uh, best placed and where the gaps are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does, does that sound like a reasonable plan? JD, are you happy with that? Yeah, that's fine. I'll just look forward to some friends joining me. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if we, if we can find a, a, another, uh, you know, a couple of people, then um, to, as a starting group, that would be, that would be good. Uh, so if you want to suggest people that we could approach, then... Yeah, I, 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 su I think I suggested before, I don't know if um, anyone has, uh, has spoken to, um, like Alex at London Sport or Pete, um, because then that, that would be like, because I think like if we could get some representative people, because if we just like, we'll have a group exercise and then we have like three NGBs who's still going to have big gaps. So um, someone mm -hmm. has to take a view on sort of why to bring it. Yeah. Um, okay. I did invite uh, Alex and um, I can't remember, like all the people you suggested, I did invite today and they um, suggested they're more interested in like the strategic work on the activity list rather than the kind of detailed updating um mm. maybe we could tell how easy it is and um see if that entices them a bit more yeah yeah i mean we can Damn I'm, them. I'm gonna have a go at them <laughs> yeah well i'll i i take your point jay as well as well as anyone else who might who might be able to provide that kind of uh lens across different things because I, I i definitely take your point otherwise Dance will be great. Maybe football will be great, and I don't know cycling will be great, and everything else will be a bit patchy. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It sounds like we've got a, a plan, and the feedback on the tool, initial feedback on the tool is good. Um, what we could do is if we can if we can get a couple of the people signed up, then we can have another session just to do a walkthrough. Um, Jade, if you've got some planned changes then maybe we can try and incorporate those as part of that. So we're actually doing some, some useful work at the same time. Yeah, sure. We started sort of collating um, a list of some bits and pieces. We can, we can have a play with them. Yeah, I, I'll, um, I'll share around, uh, well, I'll share on the slides and the login details so you can go in and have a play um, with the tool. We can just reset it up again um, when it comes to uh, moving forward. You don't have to worry about breaking anything. Um, okay, on, on that basis then, I think I'm going to uh, wind things up unless anyone has got any other comments or questions or suggestions. Nothing from us? Uh, no, nothing from me. Um, no, no comments. No, no. Okay, thanks Stephen. Uh, Francis, any last comments from you? No, nothing from me, thank you. Cool. Is he? No, it all sounds good. Okay. Nick's been suspiciously quiet all the way through, which um, <laughs> I assume he just loves it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's right, because I'm busy writing a long feedback uh, <laughs> GitHub issue to follow the, uh, yeah. the thing. No, no, it, it's, it's all very, very exciting. I've obviously got questions about how we actually generate the uh, API, uh, the, the, the main JSON out of the back of it consistently and do that in a, in a way that works doesn't hold up people publishing but i think that's probably secondary to the the, the call today so 
yeah, yeah, you, you and I can work through that separately. I think it's yeah. pretty straightforward. <clears throat> totally. Great. Very exciting. Cool. Okay. Um, well, we'll move forward to this. Um, thanks for, uh, to everyone giving up their uh, time today. Um, getting the feedback was uh, always really useful. I appreciate it.